Hi, I'm Bill Koish, and I am a quantum mechanic. Uh, so I work on nanoscale quantum mechanical systems. And one example of these nanoscale systems is a quantum dot. That's where I take uh, electrostatic gates, and I can put them on a semiconductor. Uh, and I squish an electron wave function down to a tiny, tiny region, uh, but not so tiny that I put the electron on one atom. It's actually spread over about 100 different atoms. Uh, and I study the quantum mechanical features of the magnetic moment of this electron stuck in a quantum dot. Uh, and these quantum mechanical features can be used for a wide variety of applications uh, and in order to understand a lot of phenomena in, in our world. Uh, and one of, the, one of the applications or hopes uh, is that you can use these single uh, magnetic moments or single spins of electrons uh, in order to form uh, quantum bits, so qubits. Uh, and quantum bits are the analogs of classical bits, uh, but they could be used in, uh, in conjunction with quantum coherence in order to perform computations with much more power uh, than classical computation. Uh, but it goes way beyond that. So we can also understand a lot about our, our world uh, by understanding the quantum coherence of these systems. So we can also understand, for instance, processes involved in photovoltaics. Uh, when light comes in, it, it creates an electron uh, and hole pair, and the electron and hole pair both have a spin. Uh, and how that spin behaves as a function of time determines whether the electron and the whole pair go to create current uh, in order to use electricity or whether they just recombine uh, and re-emit light. Um, also, you can use this uh, idea to enhance magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, so conventional magnetic resonance imaging requires a relatively large polarization of the surrounding uh, nuclear spins, not the electron spins. So those are the spins at all of the atomic sites that you're spread over. Uh, and by transferring the spin or the polarization from the electron spin to the nuclear spins, you can enhance the signal in magnetic resonance imaging. By understanding this process and by enhancing the polarization of this nuclear system, you can possibly uh, do MRI imaging on timescales that are much shorter than conventional methods. Uh, finally, uh, so this is a question that probably we've all asked when we were young. Uh, how do birds uh, find their way when they migrate? How do they, how do they know where to go? Uh, and one of the possible answers is that uh, there's a receptor protein in the bird's eye. So it turns out that when light hits this receptor protein, it creates a radical pair. This radical pair has two spins. Those spins uh, interact with nuclear spins around them, uh, and their quantum coherence will actually determine decay products. Uh, it, so the protein in, in this bird's eye is, is known as cryptochrome, uh, and you may want to know that uh, <laughs> for future reference. And it turns out that this protein also exists in mustard plants. And people have been able to show that mustard plants grow faster or slower depending on whether you apply a magnetic field or not. Uh, and so they believe that birds can actually sense the direction and magnitude of magnetic fields uh, by using this decay process, which really involves quantum coherence. So that's what I do. Thank you.